Hey there, it's Katie Jarvis with Managing the Mess. I'm a K-6 elementary art teacher at a Title I school just outside of Washington, D.C. In this video, I'm going to give you 10 tips for an outstanding art teacher observation. First, I want to start off by going over different observations that might happen for you as an art teacher. You might be observed by district personnel. You might be observed by administrators um, in your building or a mentor teacher. Um, within your building or visiting mentor teacher from another school. You could be observed by a cooperating teacher if you are a student teacher or a college professor. Now there are different types of evaluations. There are formal and informal. A formal observation typically has a conference before the person comes in and observes where you go over what's going to be taught that day, what that observer should be seeing, and then you would also have a post-conference. So after that person comes in and observe, you would have a conference where they're giving you some feedback and talking about how it went. An informal evaluation is typically a little bit shorter and you're not required to write up the whole lesson plans in many circumstances. They're just popping in for a little snapshot of 10 or 15 minutes about what might be going on that day. Now, observations can be announced where you know that the observer is coming to visit your classroom or they can be unannounced where the observer just pops in to see you. Now, none of these situations are a got you. They're just coming in to see your everyday good teaching. And you can prepare for these observations by finding the rubric. It doesn't matter what state or what district you teach in, there is a rubric that your observer is using to rank you as being you know, ineffective or highly effective. So you want to find that rubric and see how the structure of your class would fit into that and how you're leading lessons so that you can achieve that highly effective status. Make sure that when the observer is there that you are focused on the students. It's really easy to get nervous and kind of be watching what is that other adult doing and what are they writing down, but you really need to have your focus on helping the students and doing your regular job. Make sure that you are also, um, with your nervousness, not forgetting to scan the entire room so you can see what all the students are doing. And what the observer is going to be doing is they're going to be taking notes. So they might be sitting there with a laptop or with a notepad um, or you know your form that they're filling out for the observation. And they're going to be taking notes about what the students are doing. They're going to be taking notes on um, what they see you doing and what they see you saying. And also, what do they think is happening in the classroom at the time that they're going on? What do they think the objectives are of the lesson? And they're going to give some a little bit of feedback also about the learning environment as a whole. So we've talked about what an observation is. Now let's talk about what it is not. It is not a show that you're putting on for the adults who are observing. So this is not when you pull out your craziest rainbow outfit and plan the world's greatest art lesson. I see posts all the time where people are asking for a lesson to use for an observation. This is not the time to try something new. It's to try something that you feel really confident teaching. And as art teachers, we're lucky that we often teach more than one section of a class. So if you know that you're getting observed on Friday, you can practice this week lesson that you're doing you know on Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday with your other classes so that when you get to the one where you're being observed you feel very confident and comfortable um, don't do something new just because you see something wonderful on Instagram this isn't the time to try it out often you'll try a lesson and you know it might flop the first time that you teach it so you want something that's really tried and true that you know students are going to be engaged in that person coming in to observe knows that they're not coming to see fireworks and sparklers and a giant show. They're not coming to be entertained. They're coming in to see your good everyday teaching. This next one is something that administrators have told me they really don't like to see, and that is teachers that aren't ready to go. So when you are not quite organized, the class is waiting in the hallway, you're still gathering materials, and you are not ready to go, that looks poorly on you. So be ready to greet your students, make sure that you have things organized and set up ahead of time, and make sure that your class period starts on time. Now, I have a video about how I start art. It's called, Do You Know How to Start Art? And I'd love for you to check it out next. What I do in that video is I walk you through me greeting the students, having them sit down on the carpet, the greeting that we do each and every class, how we go over the art room rules, 
every week how we center people with the Mona Lisa listening. And it's a routine that takes maybe two or three minutes of our class time, but it's something we do each and every week. And whenever I've been observed, I've always had high marks on this as getting right down to business, students knowing what was expected, high expectations being set for all the students from the start of class. So it's wait for you to really wow your observers. When you're observed, observers are coming in to see just an everyday awesome art class. Now, that means that you're not going to be setting things up the night before for this, but you're going to be setting things up from the very start of the school year with your routines. So very clearly at the beginning of the school year, you want to teach your routines to students and weekly you want to review and model and practice these routines so that at any point in the school year, you get observed these things are just running like clockwork. Students know exactly what's expected. Things are very clear and very smooth. Now, what that means for you is as an art teacher, you're saying these routines over and over and over, and it needs to be that way. Your students only see you once a week. So it's gonna feel very repetitive, I think, um, to me as a teacher, but those students are only hearing that once a week, those reminders of how to put things on the drying rack or how we're gonna go about cleaning up. So you wanna be extremely clear with that. You wanna to try to keep things very consistent with your routines so that it's the same from week to week where they turn in papers or what they do with a wet painting or even what they could do when they're finished with their project. Now, one thing that probably will happen to you in an observation is they may stay long enough that they see your students clean up. I know when I was a new teacher, I was kind of watching the clock out of the corner of my eye and just be, oh, you know, so relieved when they would leave before the cleanup because this is a bit of an unstructured time compared to other parts of the school day. So you want to make sure that your cleanup routines are really tight and any transitions that you have within your class are going to be really tight. Um, that means smooth transition. So if students are moving from the carpet back to their seats, you want to teach how that should look so that when you're being observed, this runs really smooth and it looks like students have been taught what to do and these procedures are calm and efficient. Um, especially with cleaning up, it's something you're gonna want to do um, from the very first day and then revisit each time you switch materials because it's gonna change up a bit in the art room. I do have a video all about controlling the cleanup chaos that I would love for you to check out. It's gonna go through tips of how to give those directions from the start of class and there's a lot of things in that I think you're gonna find very helpful. I highly suggest that you teach with slides and this works really well when you're being observed. So I have slides that I use from the moment my students walk into class. We have our opening routine that all involves slides and then my lesson will go through slides. How this is helpful and helps things to run smooth for me is I have reminders about what comes next. So if I'm being observed and I'm feeling a little bit nervous, those slides are keeping me right in line with what I need to say next. Also, your might, brain might get a little bit jumbled because you say these things over and over, especially your starting routine. So you wanna make sure that you reviewed everything with your classes and those slides are gonna to help to keep things in order. I like to have a picture within my slides of my timer so that I remember to set my timer at the beginning of class. And then through my lesson slides, I set this up so I start off with vocabulary. I teach a lot of English language learners and I wanna make sure before I just get into the project directions that kids know what what I'm talking about. They know what weaving strips are. They know what a loom is. So that when I'm giving those higher level directions, there is some understanding there. So that's something observers are gonna be looking for. Do you have a good structure to your lesson? Are you teaching vocabulary? Also in my slides, I would have the steps in the process. So often I do this in a video and I show that within my slides, but you could do this with pictures as well. It's nice to leave something up on your board that students can also reference with the steps as needed after the directions are given. For your evaluation, you're gonna want to plan out what visuals you wanna use for your lesson. And this is gonna include things that you can modify for different learners. So let's say in your um, evaluation observation, you're doing weaving. What extension activities do you have for students where this is just really, really easy? And they may even get finished 
um, during the class time? What extension things can you give them? Is there a handout with more advanced techniques or something like that that you could show them? And what support could you provide for learners that are struggling and having trouble? Could you have maybe up on the board projected, you know, what some common weaving mistakes are um, so that they can try to look at theirs and modify or ask for help if they need it? Along with your visuals, make sure that you are clearly stating to your students what the objective of the lessons are. So some schools call these learning targets, some schools call them objectives, there's different names for this. But what is the main point of the lesson of the day? So I do this during my lesson and I have it projected up on my slides. Um, so if someone was coming in to observe, they would see me sharing that information with students, but I also have this information posted up on my cabinets. So for each grade level, I put up a little teacher example and then a quick little objective poster stating in kid-friendly language, what we're doing for that day. Now I teach my students ahead of time if maybe they had been absent before, that they can look up to the cabinets and kind of see what we're doing that week. If they come in late, that's where that they should look. I also prompt them and teach them, hey, if somebody ever comes in and ask, what are we doing? Make sure you know you point up to that example and that you show them what we are doing because that's something that's going to happen in your observation. You're going to have the person observing, you know, talk to a couple of students, maybe talk to a table. Hey guys, what are you doing? Um, and you are definitely going to get marked down if those kids don't know what they're supposed to be doing. So you really need to make that very clear to students within your lesson, but also have a spot in your room where they can find and access a teacher example or, you know, those I can statements, something of that nature, so that they can be brought back into the lesson and have a clear focus on what needs to be done for that day. In your classroom, you need good solid routines for when students need to stop, look and listen, and when students need to be quiet and raise their hands. So what I do is when students come into my classroom, I have them sit down on the carpet. I guide them through each week what good listening looks like. And we do the Mona Lisa. I say Mona, they say Lisa, Mona, Lisa, Mona, Lisa. And then we say, check that your hands are still. Do a body check that your eyes are forward and that your lips are zipped. So this is a good thing for your observer to see that you're setting those high expectations. During my lesson, I have a sign on the board that I changed to the red zone. So students know that they are not to talk, that they need to raise their hand. When we move back to their seats, I switch the sign to the yellow zone, meaning that they can work quietly. So this is not an expectation just when I'm being observed. This is my everyday how my classroom runs and it's a well-oiled machine because I've done this from the first day. So if I'm being observed, my students already know when I change that sign to red that they're going to need to raise their hands. You're also going to want a really strong signal that you use or a call and response that means stop, look, and listen. For me, I ring a little bell and students know that they need to put their hands up and stop working and put their eyes on me. They then need to be silent then I can give a direction. So there might be another direction that I need to put in there. There might be something I forgot. It happens. Or if you notice things are not going the right way, you want a signal to be able to stop your students and say, boys and girls, I noticed that, you know, there was a sound when we got up from the carpet and moved back to our tables. So we need to go ahead and try that again. Don't be afraid if things don't look or sound the way that you expect within your evaluation to have students do things again. And that should be something you're doing in your classroom on a regular basis when those routines just do not look right. But the routines about not talking over students should be something that you establish from the very first day of school. This is gonna make your job easier. Um, and it's gonna make you look as though you've got your classroom management in order when you are observed. From day one in your art room, you should have a behavior management plan. What is your plan? What are you going to do when students misbehave? Because it's going to happen. And guess what? It can even happen when you're being observed. Most of the time, you're going to have students that are very well behaved if they notice that there is a visitor in the classroom. But from time to time, you're going to get a little stinker that is going to push their uh, limits and definitely press your buttons and see what they can get away with. Um, when someone is visiting. 
So make sure that you have things in place so that they know what's going to happen. They know that common language that you're going to use. So for me, and I have a video all about this, um, if you're looking for a little bit more detail, but for me, I say that is a one if it's the first warning about something. So if I have a student maybe that's talking while I'm talking and giving my lesson, I would just say their name and say that's a one. And that way the student knows that I've noticed them. The person that's observing sees that I've acknowledged that misbehavior. And then I'm helping that student to refocus and move forward doing the right thing. Um, what you don't wanna do when you're being observed is to ignore any misbehavior. You want to show that you have a plan and that the students are familiar with this plan. They're not surprised, they're not arguing back, they're not confused. They've seen this play out before, and this is something that feels comfortable to your students. Make sure that the lesson that your observers are seeing is interactive and fun for students. Just because someone is there to observe doesn't mean that you need to be standing at the front and talking for much, much longer than you normally would. Work in questions for students. Work in where you know they can give you feedback with a thumbs up, thumbs to the side, thumbs down, or that they can turn and talk to a partner. When you're doing your lesson, you can build in where a students maybe complete an exit ticket or they have some way of practicing what's gonna happen in the lesson. Um, maybe they do a little practice, everyone does a little part of it, and then they come back to the carpet and you talk about that again. But make sure that things are very interactive for students. You're not asking for them to sit for a very long period of time and not be fully engaged with the lesson. Make sure, of course, that you plan for this observation lesson, but then go back in and over plan. You wanna make sure that if your observer stays for that full class period, that students are engaged throughout the lesson. So you may want to have some type of a planning sheet. Then they do the art activity, then they have a little exit ticket if they finish early. And then from there, maybe the people that finish their exit tickets are given a specific clean up job. What you don't want to do is have your lesson stop, you know, 10, 20 minutes early and have students doing things like free drawing or something that maybe your observer might not see as a valuable use of your class time. Just in case, create a technology backup plan. What if you can't use your slides? What if the YouTube video just isn't working? Could you also get a copy of that same book from the library so you have it tucked away just in case? Could you have your slides printed out and just have them sitting on your desk in case you need to use them as a reference? It's always gonna be better to be safe than sorry and you will feel comfortable knowing that you have that backup plan in place. Best of luck on your next observation. Be sure to look around my channel. I have videos with tips and tricks to help make your job easier. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe.